Hi everyone, it's Leilani. Welcome back to my channel. So today it is time to add all of my June reads into my reading journal. So hey, I am doing better. I'm on a much better schedule now. As you can see, we're not like months behind at this point. So I'm feeling pretty good. Got my reads done for June. Working on July now in the proper month and I should be back on track for the rest of the year. So I'm feeling really good. I just got kind of behind there in April and May and I've just been really, really trucking along trying to get back on track. So it's feeling a lot better. So I thought that I would go ahead and print off all of my book covers here and get these pages completed. So the first thing that I always do whenever I pull out my reading journal is to do my bookish year, which this is my first spread and one of my favorites. I love printing off the little book covers, super small. I think the size that I chose is a 0.6 by 0.9 and that's just a random size that worked for me. I'm able to uh, choose the custom sizes on my printer and uh, settings so I can choose any size. So that's just what ended up working out. I love the way that spread looks. And then moving on to my favorites. Now this is probably the spread that I love the most out of the whole entire book. I just absolutely love the bright colors. I love that I have all of the different circles and squares and little areas already done for me. And then all I have to do is add my sticker of my favorite book for the month. And then I just slightly decorate it a little bit, you know, add a few little bits and pieces to it. And I love the way all the books look together. I think that's going to be a really fun thing to see as the year continues. Then of course I have my Goodreads challenge. So in Goodreads on the app, I've put that I wanted to read a hundred books this year. I don't know that I will make that uh, amount of books, but that's perfectly fine. But so I just did a hundred little squares. And then for each month, I fill in the squares for each book that I read. So again, this month, I've kind of just been uh, going with my goal of seven books every month. So again, this month I have uh, seven books read. So I'm just filling in all of those squares. Now I do want to mention while I do this, that I did not cut anything out of this video. So if there's anything kind of weird or any lags or anything like I'm just sitting there, it's because I didn't edit this video. It was like 20 minutes. I thought, what the heck? We're just going to chit chat about books and all the things. And I'll just try to make it as long as I possibly can. So um, so just bear with me if there's any <laughs> kind of weird moments. So I'm going to color all of these in. I'm again using my mild liners. These are my favorite kind of markers. They're great for both uh, doing like more drawing and things, but also highlighting. So I just really enjoy them. Now I do have my a bought list where I'm supposed to be writing out books that I've purchased. The thing is, I've not really been buying that many books. I guess maybe if I did um, a list of purchased books, books next year. I could always change it this year, but I would have to really go back and calculate it. But I was starting to think, you know what I would maybe do? I would do a, a list of the books I bought, but I would do physical and audio because I have purchase several on audio. So that would be something maybe I would do. But as far as purchasing like physical copies of the book, I have not purchased any in the last two or three months. So um, that is why I've just kind of moved moved along and I haven't stopped at that spread in a while. Also with the Cozy Bingo, I didn't end up filling that out this month. And I accidentally skipped over the cozy book club spread. I didn't mean to do that. So we'll pop that in at the end. Right now I'm on my book shelfie. So of course I'm filling these in. I have them color coded by five star, four star, three star, two star, and one star. So far, no one stars this year. That's really, really rare, but I did have two, two stars this month. So it was kind of a bit of a, a flop there, but I did also get uh, two five stars, I believe. So that is very exciting. So I'm kind of waiting for these to um, to dry. I did have a little bit of a, um, like, you know, it smeared, that's the word, a little bit of a smear there on one of those books. So I just uh, erased it and rewrote it. So I am using those pins there. I'm not exactly sure of the brand, but I just grabbed them at Target and they're one of the erasable pins. They've really worked out very, very nicely for me, but I've gotten a lot of comments about how if uh, the pin, like it gets wet or it gets 
uh, like melty, like being in a hot car, anything like that. Everything that you've written will just disappear. So that is very good to know. For me, I just keep this reading journal in my craft room. I put it right back on my shelf whenever I'm done. I don't ever take it anywhere, so I should be fine. And I've found that the erasable pen is absolutely excellent for me personally. I also use it in my planning and it's super lifesaver for like changing your plans up and everything. But that is just something to note if you're worried about like the longevity of your album, perhaps don't choose the erasable pen. So now we're moving on to the monthly spread. So just like every month, I've pulled out these, I believe they're Allie Edwards uh, Alpha Stamps, and I stamped my title, which is June. Then I'm just going through with my mild liner, and I'm doing my outline here all the way around both sides of my spread, where we will document all of the books that I read. And then I'll start popping in the different elements of all the stats, the total books, my favorite book, all that kind of good stuff. So we'll pop all those things into place. So as I start to get everything going, I'll probably interrupt myself to let you know different things that I'm doing. I thought there was like a little spot on here. I tried to erase it. It didn't really come up, but we'll cover it up with some of the stamping as we go. But anyway, I will probably interrupt myself as uh, as we work on things if I need to tell you anything, but I did just want to chit chat about some of the books that I read this month. So first off, I'm starting with these wooden stamps. I'm going to stamp out the stats and the total books and get everything into place over here on the left side of my spread. So as far as the books that I read this month, it was a really fun reading month for me. But like I said, I had some really big wins and I had a couple super flops. Um, but all in all, it was really fun because first off, there was a couple very highly anticipated summer thrillers that I was looking forward to reading. So we had Middle of the Night by Riley Sager and also The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Now, I was definitely way more excited to read Middle of the Night by Riley Sager because Riley Sager is one of my favorite authors. Um, I ended up giving Middle of the Night four stars. I did really enjoy the ride. And that's the thing for me personally about Riley Sager is that even in if I don't love every element of the book, there's been some where I've absolutely adored the ending and then somewhere I felt like the story kind of fizzled out and I didn't super love the ending. Um, but I always have a really good time along for the ride. I always enjoy his books. I'm never bored. I love the um, the atmosphere and everything. So for me personally, Riley Sager's always a win and he's always someone that I want to read from. So I was really excited about Middle of the Night. And again, it wasn't my ultimate ultimate favorite Riley Sager, but I did really enjoy it and I had a lot of fun. So I gave that one four stars. Now, as far as m the Midnight Feast goes, I have to say that I had the exact opposite feelings for this book. Now, Lucy Foley has not been one of my favorite authors at all, but she's one of those very known authors that I thought, okay, I'm going to give her another chance. I can't remember how I felt about I think it was maybe The Hunting Party, but I don't think I loved it that much. I think it was mediocre for me, but I despise the Paris apartment. I thought that one was super, super boring. And so again, with the Midnight Feast, y'all, when I say I tried to enjoy this book, I truly tried. I was really trying to pay attention, get into it. There were so many characters to keep track of, so many things. And I just kind of predicted what was going to happen quite early on. So I just felt like it just wasn't the book for me. I don't think that her writing is for me at all. So I ended up giving that one a two star. I could barely get through it. So that was not one of my favorite thrillers at all. So you win some, you lose some. I did definitely have some other wins though, because after I read uh, The Dead Romantics, which was one of my May reads, I loved it. It was by Ashley Poston um, and it is a romance. I'm not a big romance reader, so um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about that book. And actually I had picked it up like last October or November of 2023, and I didn't end up finishing it. I only read the first couple chapters, didn't really get into it, and I knew I would pick it back up eventually, but I hadn't tried again. Well, I was doing so many house projects. I already had the Dead Romantics um, on audio, so I thought I would try it, and I loved it. Gave it five stars, as y'all know, if you watched my May recap. Um, so this month, I was like, okay, I'm feeling like 
keeping that romance vibe going. And I'm going to read The Seven Year Slip, which was another book by Ashley Poston that I'd heard about a lot. And I absolutely love that one as well. It's about a magical apartment um, and two people, of course, falling in love. And it was just so good. I really, really enjoyed it. And then her newest book just came out at the end of June, and it is called A Novel Love Story. And now it is a book lover's dream. It's definitely for people who are bookish, who enjoy all of the book things. It is about a girl who actually stumbles across a fictional town from her favorite book, and she's like living among the characters in her favorite book. It also includes bookstores and coziness and the small town stars hollow kind of vibes. It is so cute. So that is the one that I ultimately chose as my favorite book of the month, although I did give both A Novel Love Story and The Seven Year Slip five stars, and I and I really loved both of them. Another thing that I love about Ashley Poston's books is that she uh, does little uh, nods to the books within the other books. So like uh, The Dead Romantics was the first one. And then when Seven Year Slip came, there was a couple little, you know, insiders. If you had read The Dead Romantics that you would know when you're reading The Seven Year Slip. And in the novel Love Story, she had a couple nods to both of those books. And I just think that's fun because you're kind of in on the story, the deeper story. And I absolutely love that. I'm excited as well because Ashley Poston is on a, a book um, book signing tour right now, and I'm going to attend later this month. So I'll tell you all about that uh, when we get there, but I'm really excited to get to go to one of her book signings. So here you can see that the left side of the page, it's really coming together. And what I always do is I do those stats at the top. So in the stats, I always have the total number of pages, the total audiobooks, the total physical books, and then just some of the different genres that I read during the month. Then I always have a total number of books, even though, you know, I didn't know when I started this uh, reading journal at the beginning of the year that I was going to read seven books each month, but actually throughout all of the books, or excuse me, all of the months so far this year, I've just stuck to seven books. I like to have a goal and I like to have a total number to work towards. So that seven seems to be a a good number for me personally. And also it works really nicely with my spread. If I'm being honest, I like having one book over here on the left side and then having six books on the right side of the page that just works out really nicely. Um, And so what I tend to do is maybe read slash listen to five uh, regular like novels throughout the month. And then usually I'll pick up a couple graphic novels to kind of fill in those last couple. And that's what I tend to do and what I enjoy because I do really like to read graphic novels as well. So here I kind of got a little like uh, ran out of room with the with the title, but it still works out for me. I used the Sophie Alpha stamp from Citrus Twist and I fit in a novel love story. It's kind of smushed, but we're going to just roll with it. Um, and then I'm going to add my star rating. I think this is an older paper person stamp set, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to stamp out the five stars and then I will go ahead and um, trace around those with my pen. And then I always add just a little blurb about the book. And that works out nicely for me. As I've mentioned before, it's hard for me to like remember tidbits and details about each of the books that I read throughout the month. But I like to write just a little bit about like my favorite book of the month. And that works out nicely for me. So as I'm kind of finishing filling this part in, we'll talk about the other books that I read. So besides the two thrillers and the two romance books, I also read A Most Agreeable Murder, which was uh, the book club pick for this month. So me and some of my book friends have continued our book club and that's been really fun. And so different people are taking the wheel and hosting and whatnot um, now instead of it only being me through my Patreon. And so this month someone else chose the book and it was a really good one. I super enjoyed it. Um, A Most Agreeable Murder. So it kind of had those almost Bridgerton kind of vibes. Like it was uh, from a different 
time. And sometimes I don't like those more like period stories where they're from a long time ago, but I really enjoyed this one a lot. I thought that it was really good. I liked the mystery and it really kept me guessing and stuff throughout the the book. And it was one of my favorite ones like that, that we have read so far. So it was just your typical kind of cozy mystery, which I always love. And I ended up giving it four stars. Um, and then, like I said before, I read two different graphic novels this month as well. Now, the two graphic novels, I didn't love either one of them, unfortunately. The first one was called Rainbow, and it was really cute. The illustrations were adorable. It's definitely an illustrative style that I enjoy, and it was about a girl who's like 17, and how she's kind of going through some personal things at home and how she has a big imagination when she's out in the world and kind of imagines kind of more magical, whimsical things going on around her than probably what her reality is. But she meets another girl that they're both intrigued by each other. And I think they're going to start up a friendship or maybe a romance. But this book kind of stopped abruptly. So you have to get the second book to finish it. I am so sorry about my head, by the way. I mean, this is just... <laughs> wildly inappropriate. So I do apologize. We'll see if that goes away and gets any better. Um, but uh, anyways, it was definitely cute. I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, but it was not my favorite graphic novel that I've read by any means. So I might pick up the second one perhaps, but also I don't know that I want to pay for it. So we'll just see how that goes. And then the last one was called The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. This was kind of just a random one that I picked up. I knew that it had several in the series. I thought, oh, why not? I'll try it. This one was a much more kind of adult um, graphic novel and I think just was a little deep for me. Um, it was about, I mean, I was having trouble following it, but it was about death, like the lady who was actually deaf and how she, um, I guess, got fired from her job and then she took over the body I think, of Layla Starr. It was kind of losing me there. And how she was trying to ultimately um, get rid of the person who like created mortality or something. And it was just, it did come for full circle at the end and had kind of a nice ending. But wow, getting there, I was like, whoa, this is way over my head. <laughs> Personally, this is a little too deep for me for a graphic novel, if you know what I mean. And, um, I don't think that I'll be picking up any more of those. Uh, I checked Goodreads and it did have a lot of great reviews. So it might've just been a little too, too much for me personally, but I only gave it two stars. And I hate to do that for some books because I'm sure that it did do what it was set out to do, but it just wasn't the graphic novel for me personally. So that was my other two star. So not too bad. At least it was a, a quick and easy read to get that two star. Sometimes it's so hard when you're reading a full novel, you know, and you get to the end and you're like, wow, this thing was only two stars. Didn't love it. So that is what happens though. So here on this right side of the spread, as always, I've created my little boxes. Again, I'm pretty chill with the boxes. I don't like count the number of squares. I'm not trying to make everything perfect. I just kind of roll with it and keep that kind of wonkiness going on that I am known for. Then um, I added all of my sticker book covers there. Then I'm going to add just a few little highlighted lines where I'll always pop in the number of pages for each individual book. Also the genre of each book. And then if I read it via audio or physical. And just like always, I'm going to pull out that small stamp set from uh, Ellie Studio, and it has all kinds of little daily icons and things that you can use, but it does have both the headphones and a book. So I'm going to, after I pop in all of my info, I will then um, stamp one or the other to represent if I read it via audio or physically. And then I will do my star rating. And after that, we will have everything wrapped up. So again, I'm just so super happy to be back on track with my reading. I've found over the last couple of years, I've just absolutely adored reading and it's been such a fun um, hobby for me. And over the last you know, couple months, I just kind of fell off. And I do blame Desperate Housewives. I love Desperate Housewives 
so much. And I just got really, really into watching the show to the point where I wasn't doing anything else. And that's all I wanted to watch. Um, and so it really took away from my, especially audiobooks. For me, audiobooks just work out so perfectly because I love to be multitasking and I'm always working on stuff around the house, doing chores, you know, doing all the things. And I just absolutely love being able to pop on an audiobook and let it just take me away. So I've missed them a lot. So it feels so good to be back on track and, um, to be listening to my books again and reading my books and just really enjoying it. And from kind of getting back into it, I found this author who I really adore, Ashley Poston. I mean, all three of these books, I just thought were so cute. They're like rom-coms, lighthearted, low on the romance. So if you're like really looking for the romance or like the more smutty books, that's definitely not these, but it just was, it's a feel good book. And I love that they all have like this bit of whimsy going on so that it's, it's definitely a little magical, just, just really fun. And I super enjoyed it. So here we are at the end of this June journey here. I'm going to show you an up close of all my pages. We have my bookish year, my favorites, my Goodreads challenge, Here's the cozy book club. So just like um, last month, I did that little placeholder for having no book club. Here, I'm popping in the uh, book cover for A Most Agreeable Murder, which will be here for number six. I'm going to add on just a few little doodles, and then we'll have that in place. And that's going to be it for the video. So I hope that you guys enjoyed following along with all of this month's reads. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give me a like or please consider subscribing. And of course, I I will be back at you super soon with another video. Have a great day, friends. I'll talk to you later. Bye, y'all.